Hey everybody, welcome back to another film of the week. Hope you guys have been enjoying the content channel as of late. Off to work on a very foggy day, kind of spooky. So uh, we are back once again with another film of the week. This one is going to be shot as a backup, just in case I don't have any other, um, just in case I have a film that I don't get to that week, I'll have this as a backup. So again, uh, similar to how I did the it review, uh, just in the event that I don't have something, I will use what basically is now amounting to Stephen King adaptations as my source of backup. So, so uh, in the event that I do not have film of the week, we are going to be talking about this film today. That film being Doctor Sleep, which was directed by Mike Flanagan, who of course uh, most notably has done the is the creator of the TV show Haunting of Hill House, um, and on film front he has done films such as Oculus and a film called Hush, which I've heard interesting things about. And uh, he has a film coming out called Life of Chuck, which uh, has a big cast involved. So. But this is Dr. Sleep, and this is actually a follow-up to The Shining. Now, it was... The book was, you know, it was a follow-up to The Shining, but, you know, it was, but in some respects, kind of an individual, you know, story based on my, what I read about it, um, and thankfully the film kind of acts as so, but this is following up from The Shining, and uh, that, the Stanley Kubrick's uh, Shining, and uh, this takes place many years later, uh, the boy, uh, Danny, is now uh, many, many, many years older, this point uh, her mother has passed on and he's in a bit of a bad spot um, he's become a raging alcoholic kind of contrasting that of his father and he's you know slipping and he's kind of moving from place to place and ultimately what ends up happening is he finds himself a job uh, where he can actually utilize his powers that of the shining to good use um, and he uses it within Helping out people, uh, you know, passing on, as it were, which in this very, very uh, nice uh, sequence with this uh, this cat, where they, you know, illustrate that of death, you know, coming towards a lot of these individuals, and Danny helping them pass on, you know, a very, you know, kind of tender like sequence. But um, amidst all this, him trying to build his life back up, there is a a a connection that he appears to have with a little girl who shares. The same power that, that he does, and there are forces that are after her. Uh, that and uh, Rebecca Ferguson's character, uh, who is harnessing that power because of her own desires to sustain her. Uh, I forget entirely or so, but I believe it's like an, just to keep her intact, or else she will die if she doesn't, or she if she'll pass on to the next life if she doesn't have enough of this energy of sorts. So it becomes a you know, kind of a, uh, you know, a, a, uh, a quest for The Shining, as it were. And the two people, Ian McGregor and this uh, little girl, eventually team up, and they go on this adventure to try to find a way to stop this evil force, and some of which may come with revisiting old places that harken back to Danny's uh, troubled past. That also visually speaking, may remind us of a classic film that we all know and love. So, so Doctor Sleep uh, came out in 2019, I believe, and uh, of course, you know, doing a follow-up to The Shining is a tall, tall order, especially for me, because I adore The Shining. It's one of my favorite films of all time. Uh, I don't know if I would go as far as to say it's my favorite horror film, but I mean, surely by production design you know, alone, aesthetically speaking, it is just, just chef's kiss, just really, really terrific. Um, but, you know, doing a follow-up to The Shining is a tall, 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 tall order. And the thing that I think has to be noted about Dr. Sleep is that immediate question is about the comparison between The Shining and Dr. Sleep. I think that you should detach from that if you are to appreciate what Dr. Sleep is doing. I mean, eventually it does you know, become that of The Shining, but for a large portion of its time, it is its own individual story, and it's 
it's not relying so harshly on on Stanley Kubrick's film. Eventually, it, gra- it kind of gradually gets to that place, but for a large portion of its time, it is its own little story. And that story is actually padded with details, padded with sincerity, and with a sense of of depth. And I appreciated that, especially with like certain sequences, like I said, with the like at the hospital or in that little you know um, uh, you know like elderly you know care center that he's in. You know, like that scene felt quite tender, and you know, in many respects, there's other scenes like that that kind of provoke that response. The scene of which, when it does, you know, when we eventually do get back to the house, the old house, and we, you know, revisit, you know, old figures from Danny's past, uh, even those, you know, kind of felt respected and felt warranted. It didn't feel like, oh, we're just here for show, you know. It's some, to some extent, the third act can feel like that. But also, in many respects, it doesn't, so. Um, so, I think that for a large portion of its time, you get something that is, I wouldn't say completely self-contained, but in terms of narrative, what it is about, it does, you know, present a different wrinkle that is, um, that is, um, a kind of, in some ways, uh, uh, fitting for following up The Shining, because The Shining, you know, talking about Kubrick's film, it, you know, boiled down to that of, of abuse and about the effects of violence and the effects of, you know, within being that, in that sort of dynamic or that sort of toxic relationship spreading, you know, that's sort of, you know, dominance over people, the toxicities breeded within masculinity, you know, that sort of thing. With this film, it's about the aftermath of that, the trauma that is that is inflicted, that is taken with the victims of those sort of um, who who you know are unfortunately unfortunately are previewed or you know in those sort of events. Um, and you know, Danny Torrance in this film is absolutely you know dealing with that, wrestling with that, and also with that his of his of those influences that came with him throughout the years with his father and his mother, you know, him at the beginning, you know, kind of echoing that of his father. And then there's that really nice sequence, um, in the third act where they, you know, have him and his father, you know, talking to each other and it's him ultimately dealing with his alcoholism, you know, trying to not, you know, cave into that mentality again, that also echoes that of his father. So, so, I think that it is careful, and it is it isn't just doing stuff just to remind us of The Shining. It's doing things to actually promote different uh, ideas, and I think that you get something that is fairly well made. Obviously, in comparison to The Shining, it does not hold up. Obviously, it's The Shining is on a different league of its own, but I think that it does a pretty good job at creating its own story while also following up from that and finding a unique way to continue that story. Um, you know, I'm not familiar with the book, you know, I'm not sure how much of the book they take inspiration from, or if, if it's page by page, or if they take liberties from the book, not entirely sure, but, um, but just speaking purely about the film itself, I think that it does a good job, and I think that there are good stuff there. You get good performances um, there with Ian McGregor and with Rebecca Ferguson, who, Rebecca Ferguson, for, to my memory, was, you know, has this, like, sinister presence that was very um kind of delicious and that's the i guess the right word for it um and it was and it was also intriguing in just terms of just how she plays around with the, with that space um and i i acknowledge that some people also take issue in discussion of the kubrick film in relation to this that the concept of the shining does become kind of a literal concept, whereas in the original film it's kind of ambiguous as to what that sort of thing is. So I get some people may find some diminish in coming into this film, but if you were to, like I said, kind of separate that, um, separate your feeling of the original and just come into this thinking of it as an individual story, I guess you can say maybe a companion piece, if that makes it better, like kind of a loose connection, you know, loose loosely, you know, in some respects, even though it does absolutely it is definitely in following of that film. I guess what I'm basically saying is that if you are just thinking of Kubrick's film and coming into this, I do think that you may find 
you may find things that are a bit disappointing. But if you come into this on its own terms and see how it plays out, I think that there's stuff there that works. And I, and I, I even extended further with that discussion of Kubrick's film where there are threads that I feel are followed up in nice ways, like I said, in relation to that original film. The you know, the whole point of the original film is about abuse, and I think that that gradual next step would be about discussing the traumatic effects of that abuse. And the film does that, you know, in uh, this, in, you know, also doing the nostalgia, you know, uh, bait, you know, where we do go through seeing different shots of remindings of that original film. Oh my gosh, it's the door with the crack. But it, in, in showing you that, it gives you a a point of view. It's not just there just to show you it, it's there to give you a point of view as well in relation to its themes. So so I think it's, like I said, it's careful and I think that it's also just pretty well made. Um, and it's unfortunate that it didn't do well. Um, it, it just did not do well. There was a prequel idea that Mike Flanagan was going to work on and I think Stephen King himself actually approved of it. So you know, so it's it's a little unfortunate that, that that it didn't do as well, but I think that you do get something pretty well made, and it kind of came and went, and it's not really as t much talked about, but I think it definitely deserves your time, and it's it's not as good as The Shining, absolutely not. There, it does not hold a candle to the original Shining, but on its own, on its own terms, I think that it does a fairly good job at doing what it want, what it sets out to do, and. And and in in following up from Kubrick's film, I think that it is a good piece in discussion of that as well. Is it is it great? Absolutely not. But it definitely works. And I think that it works solely on the benefit of doing its own thing, while simultaneously, to some extent, also paying homage and following of that original uh, film. So. so, so yeah, so I think it's good, but. I, I think that it's good mainly in the point of view of looking at it as, as its own thing. If you were to look at it purely from the point of this is the sequel to Kubrick's Shining, I think that there are going to be more cracks that you may see than if you were to look at this as just its own thing. So, so I think it purely depends on your expectation of how you go into it. For me, I just looked at it, looked at it as its own film and I found more rewarding uh, factor than perhaps if I were to look at it the other way. So. so, so yeah, those are my thoughts on Dr. Sleep. I thought it was good. I thought it was a good piece. I, I think that, it def like I said, definitely follows up The Shining in meaningful ways and respected ways. And I think that that's the word I'm looking for, is that it's it's a respectful sequel, if you were to think of it as a follow-up to Kubrick's film. It's a respectful sequel, but it's also a well-made film in my opinion. So, so those are my thoughts on Dr. Sleep. You guys let me know your thoughts on Dr. Sleep in the comment section below. And like I said, this is a backup review, so we'll see if I end up using this in the future. But, but, uh, but yeah, so let me, let me know all your thoughts on Dr. Sleep and the original film, of course, in the comment section below. And if you've read the books, let me know if the source material lines up with the films or if there's major differences. There probably is, but let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below. And that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. And until then, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.